Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back. And today I want to talk about a question I get all the time, which is, hey, Bri, what do I do with fish? My answer is usually the same and it's an easy one. Make fish tacos. They're delicious. They're fresh. It's summer right now and they taste like the beach, dudes. So in today's recipe, I'm gonna break down my path for making an easy, delicious fish taco. It's part three in the series. We're here to pay tribute. Tacos are the best. Let's get started. Okay, so this recipe I basically came up with out of necessity. As a sous chef, I would butcher the fish during the day, and in the afternoon, I'd have to make staff meal. I'd usually have some scraps left over, and these days in restaurants, all that fish scrap doesn't really get turned into what it used to in the French restaurants of the 70s and 80s. They used to like maybe make a poached fish meatball or something out of it, but these days it either goes in the trash or gets turned into staff meal. So today's recipe is a tribute to that. It's a marinated piece of fish that we're putting a little bit of crunchy slaw on and some spicy mayo. And to do that, we're gonna grab a medium nonstick sauce saute pan and put it over medium high heat. In the saute pan, we're gonna combine three tablespoons of a neutral oil like canola or safflower or coconut oil might be a fun twist actually. Two minced garlic cloves, 50 grams tomato paste, 20 grams of chili powder, two grams of dried oregano, 10 grams of salt, and 10 grams of sugar. We're gonna stir all that to combine and let it fry up a bit in the oil. It's gonna smell fragrant and get a little bit smoky and at that point, we're gonna deglaze the whole thing with 50 grams of water. We're also gonna add in the juice of half of a lime here and we're gonna stir everything to combine. We're gonna simmer it down for about 30 seconds or so. Once you've deglazed the pan, we've stirred it around for about 30 seconds. We're gonna transfer it to a bowl. We're gonna throw that bowl in the fridge to cool just for a minute while we grab our two pounds of fish. Just about any fish will work for this recipe. Like I said, this was born out of necessity and I've used everything from salmon to snapper. I have cod here today because it's in my freezer, but I've used shrimp here, I've used mackerel, and in fact, mackerel is probably my favorite option for this taco. It's very firm, it's got tons of fat in it. But if you can't find any of those fish, something like swordfish or mahi or even shrimp will work with this paste. Once my paste is cooled down, we're gonna take a liberal amount of it and rub these fillets down. You don't want it caked on, but you definitely wanna see it on the flesh. Cod is mild and we're gonna need help from the salt and lime in this marinade to wake it up a bit. If you have the time, I really like to let these sit and marinate for a while. So if you find yourself with one to two hours, it'll definitely benefit from a little bit of extra time. But if it's a weeknight, 10 minutes on the counter while you make the toppings and preheat the oven will do just fine. So set that aside for now, we'll get the rest of this taco figured out. For me, a fish taco isn't complete without a slaw. My beef with most slaw on top of fish tacos out there is that it's just raw cabbage that's cut really thick and it's not seasoned. Today we're gonna be using some lime, agave, cilantro, and it's gonna be a nice thin shredded mix of vegetables. It's gonna give us a really dynamic slaw for our fish. I'm gonna start with one small head of cabbage. I'm gonna very thinly slice this with my knife and feel free to use a mandolin if you're comfy using it. I'm trying to get 500 grams of very thinly sliced cabbage all day. Once we've got that measured out, I'm gonna set it aside and I'm gonna grab a half of a large red onion. We're gonna also slice that as thinly as we can. At this point, you guys know very well that we wash our red onions in this house. So under cold tap water, these go. It's 150 grams all day and we're just gonna measure that out on top of the cabbage. I'm going to also shred 100 grams of raw carrot using my trusty julienne peeler. 100 grams of shredded carrot, by the way, is usually about one large carrot with some extra left for snacking. I'm also gonna thinly slice 100 grams of green bell pepper to bring some sweetness and a nice green vegetal flavor to this slaw. Once we've got the peppers measured out, I'm gonna use a microplane to mince two cloves of garlic into the bowl, and I'm gonna top that with 25 grams of salt and 15 grams of sugar. We're gonna give this a classic toss, toss, toss to combine, and we're gonna let this whole thing sit on the counter to cure for about 25 minutes. Again, we're curing this cabbage mixture for a couple reasons. The first one is I hate when water drips out the back of my taco and it gets all down my wrist. It's just bad form. It means you really haven't taken the time to put things together properly. You've got a diluted taco and you're reminded by the defeat of that running liquid down your wrist. The second thing is we wanna make sure that it's seasoned. Just putting raw cabbage on something can work, but really what's the point other than just texture? I like to have texture and flavor. So we're using a little bit of sweet, some salty, some tart, to really bring something together that brings a seasoned finished component to this taco. While the cabbage is sitting and curing, we're gonna make some spicy mayo. This is the main condiment for our taco. To make this mayo into a small bowl, we're gonna measure 125 grams of mayonnaise, 50 grams of sriracha, sambal, or the hot sauce of your choice, 15 grams of salt, and the juice of half of a lime. We're gonna stir this all up to combine and give it a taste. To be honest, I make this mayo different every time at home. So after my first taste, it seems a touch tart and maybe like it needs a little bit of depth. So I'm gonna add 10 grams of paprika and a squeeze of agave, or honey works if you've got that as well. Give it another taste at this point. Do you like it? Is it craveable? You can tweak it a little bit more to your liking, but all we really need is something that's flavorful 
it's hot and it lubes up our taco a little bit. So the sauce tastes good, we're gonna set that aside. But before we do that, we're gonna turn on our broiler to high heat. Okay, so now after 20 minutes, our slaw is all cured up and we need to dry this stuff off. I like the salad spinner for this, as you saw in the previous rib video. We like to get rid of that extra moisture and to do that, I'm gonna squeeze it out a little bit. This gets rid of some of that excessive juice in those vegetables. And don't worry about this thing being salted, by the way. I know 25 grams of salt seems like a lot, but most of that dissolves into our liquid and we're spinning that off. So we're gonna vigorously spin this off in the salad spinner and we're gonna transfer this over to a bowl to finish it off. I'm gonna add the juice of one lime here and about one teaspoon of agave syrup or honey and a handful of chopped cilantro. We're gonna stir that up to combine and we're gonna taste it for seasoning. If you like it, set that aside in the fridge for now, but if you want more cilantro, more agave, definitely feel free. So our broiler has been preheated for about 10 minutes and we're gonna throw our fish right underneath on this sheet tray. It doesn't have to be on a fancy wire rack. You can broil it on anything from foil to parchment. Just make sure that it's non-flammable. And this cooking process goes pretty fast. It's usually about six to seven minutes total. While the fish cooks, I'm gonna get some tortillas warmed and of course throw them in my Goya Boy tortilla warmer to keep these babies snug until the fish is ready. A big part of bringing some deep flavor to a mild fish like cod is aggressive high heat. So we're gonna get some caramelization on the outside and some char and that's gonna go a long way in making a mild fish taste great. Once we've got some good color, we're gonna to check to see if we're cooked all the way. But most fish have a wider margin of error than Gordon Ramsay would lead you to believe. I can say that any fish you plan to put mayonnaise on in the end doesn't matter if it's perfectly medium rare, medium well, or well done. After seven minutes, our fish looks great, it smells great, and we're gonna let it rest for a second and then we're gonna gently shred it into large chunks. We definitely want some texture and we're trying to avoid getting this fish all the way shredded. To build the top once we've got our fish laid down, we're gonna give it mayo to taste, a healthy amount of our slaw, and I have some pickled red onions in the fridge. I'm gonna throw those on there. I'll throw the recipe for these pickled red onions down in the description below, by the way. And that is it. It is time for tacos. With a fish taco, you gotta be careful because you can just shred that thing to pieces and then it's basically like cat food on a tortilla. You wanna maintain those chunks. Passes the wrist test. I don't like it when fish juice is going down my wrist. It's just like clean, nice white meat, mild fish flavor. Way to go, Cod. Lunch time, come and get your lunch. So that's it. That's a time-honored way to make an easy, delicious fish taco, whether it's the weekend, a weeknight, or you gotta make staff meal in an hour. And once you get down the vegetable shredding part of this, which I feel like is probably the most labor intensive, you could probably bust this whole thing out start to finish in like 25 minutes. If you're new here and you love tacos, this was episode three in a series we're doing celebrating this perfect food. I'll link to those videos down below if you wanna keep watching taco content. As always, guys, thank you so much for your time and attention. Thank you for being here and we'll see you next time.